next guest is a lady who I've never met, but I loved her every time I see her. I loved her in Superman 1, I loved her in Superman 2. I love her because she always portrays very independent and uninhibited ladies. And she's coming out now in a new film called Heartaches, which critics have said is the performance so far of her career. So you please help me welcome Miss Margot Kidder. <laughs> Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I was going to come out and, and uh, thank you for these wonderful flowers I got in the dressing room. This fellow came up and knocked on the door and said, Miss Kidder, and gave me the most beautiful bouquet. And I said, oh, and can I have the card? And he went, oh, well, no, no. <laughs> and I said, well, who are they from? He said, well, actually, they were for someone else. And they were Sammy Davis's. So you can take them to him. <laughs> Somebody said Sammy uh, Flowers? Oh, wasn't it you? Why would I send Sammy flowers? You send me know. flowers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, married. Sammy. I have your flowers. Take them home. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, and you have a child too, right? Yeah, she's backstage, though. And we have a deal that I don't talk about her. Then we won't. Yeah. Okay. How old? She's seven. Okay, that's seven. enough. And yeah. a girl. Yeah. Okay. And a cute. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say. All right. We'll very go, cute, go. very bright, brilliant, and smart, clever. See, see, well behaved, see. Perfect. Where child. are all the parents that have stupid children? <laughs> Once, wouldn't you like to meet a parent who says, my kid is a pig and it's dumb, but I love it. Once. I, I, I wondered if that was just me, but she seems so clever to me. Always. I don't mean yours. Yeah, but I mean, if that's a thing every parent says, no, no, that's just... No, but you know what you I'm know saying. What I mean? Yeah, you're... It's like when they show you pictures, they have to think the kid is good looking. <gasps> Look at my kid. And you go, oh. Look at those eyes, especially the one that's open. It is... <laughs> Yeah, I, I just looked at some old photographs of Maggie when she was about 24 hours old. Oh. And I remember that I'd sat there in the hospital just overwhelmed and going, my God, she's so beautiful. She's so incredible. And then I just looked at them and I went, wait a minute, oh. I'm not so sure. The birth the pictures. Wink, wrinkle little prune and one eye was like this. Yeah. And, they, and they sell them to you in the hospital, I think, as blackmail. So nobody else can have those pictures. Quick, give me those pictures of those ugly little monkey. You know. <laughs> now, are you married or not married? No. So, you, you, were you married when you had her, or did, or...? <laughs> I got married. That's right. That, yeah. After you had her? Yeah. Oh, I just missed the whole damn <laughs> sexual revolution. <I'm> so... <laughs> to be able to say that, yeah, afterward we decided it was right. That's just... <laughs> well, yeah, legally. Yeah. And now you're... Because you're so cute. Do you go with anybody now? No, we can skip the subject of men. <laughs> Well, we'll <laughs> all right, we'll go, we'll just go, go right ahead. on to the other notes. <laughs> You're not going, because well, I would think, why, well, you just have a bad time with men? N n Who do you, I have a good time with men, I, you know, I enjoy them, but, um... Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather date men than women. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, but, but we could go on to other things. <laughs> and we will. Oh, yeah. just, oh, good. Okay. I was just curious if you yeah. picked the wrong time. How about you? Well, I'm married, so yeah. I just live vicariously through the guests. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> kid and then got married. Wow. <laughs> and then I'll say, then I'll say Doc came out of the closet and I have a lot to talk about. I, I, think, I think they call that now exploring your feminine half. I think that's a big come on line half? that guys have. Half? Ex well, <laughs> half. Part? Exploring half. your feminine half. Yeah, meaning... that's the big thing now, that instead of coming on like a macho guy, one of the best ways, oh. apparently the new, the new ploy to seduce women yeah. is to be exploring your feminine half. I have no problem with that. Uh, after I was married five years, my wife gave me a machoectomy. <laughs> Now, you're not against marriage. You would get married again. I would certainly get married again if I found the right person to marry. But yeah. you always keep finding the wrong? You really want to talk about marriage, don't you? <laughs> I just think you're so attractive. I just like to know as much as I can about you without having to buy the Inquirer. It is just... <laughs> uh, I bought it. 
I do too. I buy it. And I and I got to the point where I just went, you know, I'm coming out of the closet with this. I feel so awful getting the groceries up to the line and trying to get through all those great stories before I go through the checkout stand. So I finally just came out and bought it. I have a subscription. <laughs> you you have a subscription. That's right, nobody's gonna see buy it. That is tacky. Yeah, but well, really tacky. Well, That's worse than your friend Hilda. Uh, yeah, Heidi. Heidi. But, oh, Hilda. Heidi. <laughs> No, but, uh, so, but you're, now wait, you're Canadian, right? Yes. So yes. in Canada, do they have any, like, what did you do? Like, they told me, I was, I was trying to get too cleverly, and it's not going to work. <laughs> I was going to go, like, from the Enquirer and read the Enquirer, and they told me you grew up without any television, without any radio, that you had to find your own the, enjoyment. There was a little enjoy, yeah. There was, um, we were too far more north for the most part. In Where northern did you live? mining towns in Quebec, and I was born near the Arctic Circle in the Northwest Territories. <sighs> So in a lot of those places, not all of them, um, we were too far north for TV reception, so we read books. Oh, yeah. how un so un unusual I, for a child. Yeah, yeah, very strange. These days. And that's why I turned out this way. Yeah. So, so what did you do for recreation? Uh, um, we beat each other up a lot. There was, there was a thing in Quebec where if, when, until you're about six or seven years old, you were friends with the Frenchies. And then between about seven and twelve, you fought the Frenchies. My first words were my first French words, um, and I won't translate those because my daughter will get a dollar. Um, Why? Well, every time you swear. Every time I swear, she gets a dollar. She has now two hundred and sixty-seven dollars in her bank account <laughs> since Monday. Since <laughs> last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so she's. But um, so I mean, I remember one town we lived in that the mine machines would go off. This was in Labrador. And I used to get down once the mine machines had turned off at night and turn on the, the uh, shortwave radio and get Montreal and listen to the hit parade. And that was, like, really exciting for me. That was a big thrill. So how did you, you find keep looking at this? No, I, this is so that I, what I wear on airplanes. The wedding ring? Yeah. Or and motels? Then nobody bothers you. I haven't been to any motels lately. But wouldn't that be great? You have to take it off. So you just, why do you wear it? So men will start up with you? Yeah. Well, why are, you, why are you telling people on TV that? Because <laughs> she knew I was going to ask her. Do you wear it off? But doesn't that turn a lot of men off? Don't you think? Like, like well, that's the idea. <laughs> no. What if you're at a party and there's really a great looking man who looks at your finger and goes, oh, don't bother. You Do you take the ring like off? This. You'd put him on the other finger over here. But do you, have, do you go up to him and say, check it out now, look, no ring? I, here. That's, so you really wear that all the time? When I travel, yeah. yeah. Well, what if you saw a great looking... Would you start up with a married man? If a man had a ring on his finger and was very attractive, would you talk to him? If he... No. I... <laughs> have you ever started up with a married man by mistake? <laughs> Was European has a ring on the right hand and you didn't know? Uh, no. I'm not going to tell the truth. Come on. <laughs> no, because somebody told me that, um, like, you've had a lot of bad affairs in your life. They said, they said you're a fabulous girl. A friend of mine says you're a fabulous girl who picks the wrong Boy, man. Who? Have I can't give you the name. We'll talk later. <laughs> Because you well, shouldn't worry. You're so attractive. You're so pretty. I would take the ring right off and look for somebody. Right here on TV? No. Sure. I, yeah, that, okay. Oh. <laughs> Are you the only one in your family not married now? <laughs> um, I think I'm actually the only one in my family married now. No, my older brother's married now. How many were yeah. there? Three brothers and a sister. And what do they do now? Um, uh, my sister's an actress, and one brother uh, works with computers to figure out how many fields of alfalfa you can grow here and there and another brother is a <laughs> I know that sounds odd but I it's called environmental management and another brother is a roadie with a band and then my younger brother hasn't figured out what he's going to be yet. so all so the family you all moved down from Labrador no just me oh so from I, Labrador yeah. yes we left Labrador we moved about I went to 12 schools in 11 years so that was why your father's we moved, job obviously and uh yeah, he, he changed jobs a lot. Yeah, what did your school. father do? He invents explosives. And, uh, he Are you kidding me? A, he, no, he really well, does. Where do you move? You blew the school. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he had this wonderful sense of adventure. And our, every, the best part was of Daddy being the explosives expert in the towns, which was usually mining towns, was that 
every 1st of July, and in Canada, instead of the first 4th of July, you have the first, Daddy set off the fireworks. And I remember, Daddy's going to love this, but I'll tell it anyway. One, one year, um, I, I think he and his friends had a bit too much to drink and decided they were going to double the loads. And at that <laughs> point, we were in a, in a little town in northern Quebec called Setil, which is on the St. Lawrence River, and the fireworks were on the river, and, and, and they went out and lit them, and flames just shot right across the sand and caught, went from roof to roof, and they had to bring out the fire trucks. <laughs> so we left that town, and, <laughs> and on we went. And how, so you went to 11 schools, you say, in 12 years? 12 schools in 11 years, yeah. Was that, that must yeah. have been very, very rough. I don't know that it is. I think that what you get is you get a, a, um, a whole different point of view in every single town that you're in. And I think if I came out of it with anything, what I came out of it was realizing that, that most social rules are absolutely arbitrary, and, and a lot of decisions usually, and so that uh, you make up your own, you know, you... What do you mean by you make up right? your own rules? You, and how old were you when you decided this? Well, I don't think it was a decision. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to get back to it. I just am curious. What do you mean rules are arbitrary? I, th I, think, that what, I think that what you realize when you're... Um, your social setup changes. I mean, in one school you had to have more mohair sweaters, and right. in another school you're supposed to be sweet and quiet, and in another school you're supposed to be loud and raucous. And you realize that just none of it means anything. It's all nonsense. So you sort of evolve in a, in a different way. It was, I liked it. How'd you get to be an actress? I think it grew out of that sort of kind of schizophrenia of um, seeing different slices of life from place to place. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure a psychiatrist might say something else, like, she needed attention. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. think that most actors are very schizophrenic? Uh... I don't think so. I mean, I think that, that what you tend to do is divide your personality or psyche or whatever one might call it into the parts that you can use for different characters. At least that's what I do. What about, uh, like, heartaches, right? The girl you play is mm -hmm. very wild and excitable. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, what I did with heartaches was I took as a premise that this girl that never cared at all about what people thought about her, A, and that she said and did everything she thought, so that there was no censorship, so that she just jumped right in. And my first fear, of course, was that as soon as I uh, behaved that way and I said, everybody hate me, and, and, uh, th that, uh, and, and it turned out not to be true. It was very liberating, saying absolutely everything that came into my head. I looked a little dumb sometimes, but it was very liberating. It's a good thing you didn't play in Mommy Dearest. <laughs> Where's my kid? We'll be right back at this message of interest, so please stay tuned.